Welcome to Speakeasy Spirits. Today we're going to look at a cocktail that was forgotten for decades but has recently made a comeback. It's a scotch-based cocktail that on paper the ingredients shouldn't work together, but it does. We're looking at Blood and Sand. The earliest blood and sand recipe that we know of comes from 1930 in the Savoy Cocktail Book, but it most likely got its name from a 1922 Rudy Valentino movie, Blood and Sand, about a Spanish bullfighter. So the recipe must have come into existence somewhere between 22 and 1930. On paper it's an unusual mix of ingredients using scotch, cherry brandy, vermouth, and orange juice. It's an odd combination, but it does work. The original recipe was equal parts scotch, cherry brandy, sweet vermouth, and orange juice. It comes out a little sweet, and there's a modern interpretation that ups the amount of scotch, making it a bit more spirit forward, and reducing the sweetness a bit. We're going to try both of those. Over here we're going to make the classic, over here we're going to make the adjusted modern version. So let's start with three quarters of an ounce of orange juice for the classic and one full ounce of orange juice for the new version. Now we need one ounce of scotch. Put that in the new and three quarters of an ounce in the classic. And sweet vermouth, we're going to use three quarters of an ounce and cherry brandy, again another three quarters of an ounce. Now in the newer version, three quarters of an ounce of vermouth, and three quarters of an ounce of cherry brandy. Now we'll add our ice. and shake. Now we're going to double strain into a coupe glass just to catch any of the orange pulp that's still in there. and our new version. And there you have the old and new blood and sand. The classic comes off very sweet the vermouth comes through very strong on this one. The orange juice kind of takes a background note. And the scotch is present, but it's hard to find. Now on the adjusted recipe, this is much more scotch forward. The spirit definitely comes through strong. The orange juice is more visible. The vermouth takes a back seat, but is still noticeable. Adds just enough sweetness to the drink to balance it out definitely prefer the new version over the classic. So having tried these, I've got some inspiration for my own version of this drink. Since it's called Blood and Sand, we of course have to use blood orange juice. And since it's named after a Spanish bullfighting movie, we're going to go to this Compass Box Spaniard. This is a blended scotch that's been aged in Spanish Madura wine casks. We're also going to use the modern ratios on this one. First, since we're making a literal interpretation of the name of this drink, we're going to start with our sand. I've got some turbinado sugar here. We're going to take our glass and run the orange on one side of it. 
and roll it in the turbinado sugar. Since this is a light brown sugar, we now have our sand on the glass. We'll start with one ounce of our scotch. One ounce of blood orange. I'm using a bottled blood orange juice since they are out of season and very difficult to find fresh blood oranges right now. Three quarters of an ounce of vermouth. And three quarters of an ounce of our cherry brandy. Now I will add our ice. and shake. Again, we will double strain that just to catch any pulp or ice shards. Now there is one other variation of the blood and sand, which puts a float of a smoky peated scotch on top. So for this, we're gonna use our Lagavulin 16. And we're just gonna run that over the back of a spoon to float it on top. And we only wanna add a dash of that. If you haven't had a peated Isla whiskey, this is powerful stuff. We don't want to use too much of it. And there you have my Spanish blood and sand. Right away, you get the smoke from the Lagavulin. It's present, you get it in the nose, but it's not overpowering in the drink. The blood orange definitely adds a slightly different orange flavor to this. And our Madura cask aged scotch definitely enhances some of the wine notes of the vermouth. A little sweet, a little smoky, a little savory. It's a very good cocktail. So where do we go from there? Well, the smoky scotch in this one made me think of mezcal. So let's try a tequila and mezcal version of a blood and sand. We're gonna use a reposada tequila and a smoky mezcal. So let's start with one ounce of tequila. Three quarters of an ounce of our cherry brandy. Three quarters of an ounce of sweet vermouth. And one ounce of blood orange. Add that to our shaker filled with ice and shake. Now we'll double strain that into our glass. And we'll add our float of mezcal. Just a touch. And there is our tequila and mezcal blood and sand. Now I'm not usually a big tequila drinker, but I think that one's my favorite so far. The mezcal adds a nice hint of smoke on the nose. The tequila is a little sweeter than the scotch and that comes through in the drink. I think it really enhances the orange flavor. The vermouth is present, but not overpowering. It adds a subtle herbal note to it. Let's try this with a dash of orange bitters. Yeah, the dash of orange bitters definitely brings out some more spices in it. I think it enhances the vermouth a little more. 
you still get the smokiness of the mezcal. This is a really great cocktail. Maybe I'm gonna revisit this when I do margaritas. And there you have our four versions of the Blood and Sand cocktail. From the original, an equal parts cocktail, to a rebalanced modern take on it, to my literal take on the name, to our mezcal and tequila inspired Blood and Sand. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.